That's where I am now as I've cut all my cables here to the right length using these pliers. These are some nice Lyman pliers. This is double aught cable, so they call it a two zero cable or a double aught welding cable. Pretty heavy stuff. Again, I ordered this from Amazon. Ordered 10 feet of red and 10 feet of black. And so I've got to put cable ends on the end of them to where they will screw on here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to screw one on here and here and from here to here. So let's go to the shop. All right, here we are in the shop and I'm sorry you'll have to excuse my mess, but this is where I work. I cleaned off the spot here. The shop's got all kinds of projects going on all the time. So what I've got is this cable here and I want to put one of these ends on there. And they come like this, all right? So there are cable cutting machines and there's fancy ways of doing this. I'm just an old school guy. I got a simple little vise here. This is like a little three inch clamp on vise, very lightweight, but it'll, it does the job. And then I've got some flux here. I'm gonna do this with a propane torch that I bought at one of the big box stores. We'll light the torch up. Got a nice little pencil flame here going on. Real narrow flame. Some solder here, electric solder. Sil silver bearing rosin core solder. And I'm gonna strip off some insulation here, about an inch, uh, using a razor knife. Hey, this cable I just got through finishing on both ends, and it's a little bit warm still. Short cable, it gets warm quick. Got the little paper towel on it to insulate me. But you can see how I've got this end oriented close to that end. And so the two ends are, this end is not 90 degrees of that end. So it should be able to lay down and, and get the things, the job done that I need done. So it's not perfectly in line, but it is much in line. Here's the final roughed in product. It's roughed in because I've still got to do some sanding and painting, but it gets me my locations of all my things that I'm where they're going to be and the lengths of the wires are cut. So the final product will have the wires restrained and, and everything will be cleaned up as far as the clutter. Here is my, these, these wires here go from the solar panel through the box, the positive and a negative, into a 40 amp breaker on the hot side, on the red side, the positive side. The black wire passes the, goes past the breaker, and both of those wires eventually go into the solar controller. So they, the, the positive attaches here, the negative attaches here. All right, it's, it's important to do this just one step at a time. This is my solar, remote solar controller and it monitors the solar panels and the controller. Right now I'm getting 21.7 volts in and the batteries are charged up to 14.5 volts and it's got 0.1 amp going out. Now, then we've got the batteries. The batteries, I've got four, these are six volt. So these two are wired together in series. That makes them a 12 volt battery, a large 12 volt battery. These two are wired in together. This, made, this cable here makes them a 12 volt battery. Then these two and these two are wired in together by that wire and that cable. And that makes them all together a huge 12 volt battery, 400 amp hours of capacity. These are golf cart batteries. They're supposed to be more rugged. Plates are supposed to be more rugged and durable. 
they're your position to right above my axle. I wish they were on either side of the trailer, but for expediency and compactness, they need to be on one side. So there's a lot of weight. This is 240 pounds on one side. And so I have the bed on the other side to kind of offset that a little bit. So all the batteries are tied together. Here's a 150 amp breaker on the hot side. This is two aught cable, not two gauge, two aught. So it's a lot larger cable than two gauge. And the 150 amp breaker, then it goes from there to the inverter. And I'm gonna have to keep this from rubbing against that inverter there. These are cooling fins. So this is a 150 amp, a 150 watt pure sine wave inverter. It has three outlets, three 110 volt outlets. The negative wire comes from here. It's black and it goes underneath. You can see it right there. And it attaches to the other side of the black post of the inverter. And so the inverter is on right now. It's running off the battery power. And keep in mind, this is a side. This is in addition to the 110 here. So when we want to change from 110 to solar power, we can unplug these, these two right here, and plug them in right here. And that'll give us 110 volts, but it'll be totally unplugged from land. It'll be solar power. All right, now with the batteries intact, then I have to plug in, in the, to the uh, solar controller. So I have a battery here. Here's a positive and a negative. So I've got a negative right there, the black wire, and the positive. The positive, again, goes to another 40 amp breaker. This is 10 gauge wire, by the way. And then it goes back to this positive. So the solar controller is charging the batteries. It's a trickle charge. It's not a, a fast charge, it's a trickle charge, all the time trickle charge. All right, then I put in a 12 volt access panel here with fuses. This is a marine type panel for 12 volt accessories. Uh, my sink pump will be 12 volts. I also put a couple of little cigarette lighter plugs in here, ports, power ports, whatever you wanna call them and they were tapped into 12 volt as well. And they have 10 amp breakers on them, 10 gauge cable. In this panel, red wire positive, black wire negative, and they are tapped into here. There's a positive and a negative. And so the solar controller is taking care of everything. It, it controls the electricity to here, it controls the charge to the batteries, and it controls how much power is coming in from the solar panels from up on the roof. As far as the cables go, my cables aren't the prettiest. I wrap them with black tape here. Some people use heat shrink tubings. Heat shrink tubing is fine. I just didn't have the size on hand. I also happen to have some red electrical tape here, and so I could wrap all that. The object of the game is to have as little metal showing as possible because that metal is what's going to cause any kind of short circuits. So I wanted to show you this to show you the capacity of these batteries. Right now, I'm running straight off of solar panels, solar, solar batteries, and I'm powering my microwave. This is a small Westinghouse microwave. It's 950 watts. We're down to about 12.5 volts right now it's pulling off 5.7 amps but if you I've got 400 amp hours so if I used half of that that's 200 amp hours that you can use before you start causing damage to the batteries well I can use this microwave for quite a while 